Hello, Matt Yasa here. I'm going to be doing kind of an odd project today, a pulley. But I thought it might be a good chance to introduce a technique that I don't think I've done yet on the channel, is pushing a Maria. I'm going to begin to heat up a nice hot band of glass here and then push inward with both hands and form a disc. The Maria. It's also good to push it inside of the flame as much as you can. Moving it too much outside of the flame, it might get too cold and the surface will get a bit cloudy, which they call devitrification. And so I need to remove this section here. I'm going to go in for what I'm calling the bubble rip. It's just blowing out a really thin bubble and ripping it with a rod. And there's really a lot of different techniques you could use to cut through this. Like I could do the flame cut, but then it would close up the end and I'd have to pop it open and possibly flare it too. Eventually here, I want to get a wet saw for the shop to cut through the glass. I wouldn't use it all the time, but for a project specifically like this, it'd be perfect. I could cut through the wall without messing up the edge like I did here. So it'd be a very nice cylinder shape with the saw. But the reason I need a pulley in the first place is for a future project, an experiment. A little device called a gravity battery. If it works, it should redirect the force of gravity to turn a generator and create power. And I'm kind of uh, building it as we speak, so I'm not quite sure if it's going to work. It might end up a little bit like the glass flute episode, where I'm not entirely sure how things are going to pan out until the very end, but at least I give it a good attempt. And I always tend to learn something along the way, so that's what's important. I went ahead and attached a punty, and I'm going to bend it up towards the center to make an off-axis punty. This will help me hold it level after I take off this other tube, so I can work the bottom and flatten it straight. And here I'm just going in with another rod to swipe off some of that glass to clean up the edge. Make it kind of even all the way around. Now I'll go in with the jacks just to try to even out the inside edge. And now this would really be a job for a brass reamer to get a nice even hole. But sometimes you just gotta improvise with the tools you have. Like right here I'm gonna use my torch to knock this punty off and melt in that punty mark. Speaking of improvised tools, I thought I would just make it out of glass since I have that available instead of going to the hardware store. Now being made of glass, it of course won't be able to take as much weight or workload as a normal pulley would, but it might have its own kind of interesting properties. It's going to be waterproof and it'll run lubricant free. So if I do put it up in a tree or something, I won't have to worry about getting it down anytime soon. Also being glass on glass, it might have very low friction being the outside tube rolling on the inside tube, which I'm working on right now. I thought I would push a couple Maria's in the middle to have it roll on those to see if that would help reduce the friction. Also, I was thinking I could have it rolling on little marbles, kind of like a ball bearing, but I didn't want to overcomplicate the process. Sometimes simplicity equals out to efficiency, especially when it comes to physics. 
But now I'm going to heat up the edge real hot and begin to flare it out really wide with the jacks. I'm trying to flatten this rim out like a solid disc. Speaking of which, you can do these marias, these disc pushes, with a solid rod as well. It does make for some good practice. I would probably start off with a 12 millimeter rod and start pushing discs while leaving a little bit of space in between. Maybe five or six discs in a row. And your overall goal is to make all the discs the same size, you know, as similar as possible. And I want to try to make at least one more pulley here. And unfortunately, I don't have any longer tubing. I realized I went through the entire crate of 26 mil already. I normally use the brand Cymax for my clear glass. And there aren't any sales running this month. If there's two things you can do to save on glass expenses, is to pick up your glass when they put it on sale, which they sometimes do, and especially to buy in bulk. That will help on the shipping costs. Also, in case you haven't noticed yet, I updated the background a little bit. It seems we have landed on a planetary body. In the bottom right corner, you'll find a blue spaceship and a little flag. I've also been adjusting the camera angles a little bit. I got the GoPro a tad bit closer, but unfortunately it's overheating a tad, so it's not a permanent change yet. But this schedule definitely is. I'm sticking to Mondays and Fridays, so two uploads a week. This not only gives you an idea of when to expect the next episode, but it kind of helps me manage my workload a little bit. I can kind of estimate how much time is ahead of me in editing and voiceover depending on where I'm at in the project. So I can kind of decide if I need to break it up into multiple days or multiple episodes. And so for this episode here, I haven't actually decided if I want to test the pulley out yet. I know I can use an iron weight to test it real quickly, but I thought it'd be kind of neat to make a glass weight. And I thought maybe just a one pound glass weight sounds like a good standard to start with. But uh, I was pretty surprised at how much glass you need for just a one pound of weight. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how light it is. By my estimates, it would take two full length blow tubes. That's five feet each, so 10 feet of this tubing right here to equal out to one pound. Uh, of course, it's hollow in the middle, so I could just use a solid rod. But then even with that, my small scale won't go up to a pound. It maxes out about half a pound, so I'll just have to use a smaller standard and try to see if that'll work. And now to finish up this first one, I'm going to have to flare out the inside tube to keep the outside tube from falling off. So the way it works is that the inside hollow section will be the mounting hole for the pulley. It's what you'll use to mount the pulley up. While the pulley rope itself will ride between the two Marias in the middle. And now that I'm rolling them together, it is pretty smooth. It's not the most frictionless, I'll admit. So I'll have to test it out eventually here to see how well it works. But besides that, it was a good way to show you that disc push technique. And so that you don't miss the future videos coming up, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. It's a little gray bell button that is located right next to the subscribe button. It will help tell you when every video is uploaded from my channel instead of just some of them. 
And now this one has the single Maria pushed in the inner tube. We'll see if that helps reduce the friction. But now I'll put both of them in the kiln and we'll see how they look. Now here they are, they're looking pretty good. The edges probably would have been a little bit cleaner if I used a cold working tool like the wet saw. But it's more about the functionality here, which we'll be able to see once more of the parts for the device get developed. So will I be able to harness the power of electricity? We'll have to find out on the next episode of the Matt Yasa channel.